thank you. I just, before this interview, I, I went on and to LinkedIn and saw everything that you continue to do, you know, as a fiber company, um, how you have just outside of the box um, pulled community together and uh, shared information uh, with a carved in blue. And yeah. just, it's really great work. So thank you so much for doing that. Oh, well, thanks for noticing. And, um, you know, these are times when it, it does make that platform so useful to have carved in blue to bring the denim community together. You know, I like to say there's like a blue glue and these are the times when we all have to stick together. Um, and you know, it's not going to be easy. What does post pandemic world look like and who is going to survive out of this? You know, we think about our individual health, but we also have to look at the health of the industry. Exactly. Post pandemic. I mean, we're in it now trying to, you know, trying to survive and be not just survive, thrive in creativity. Yeah. Think about it. it's not status quo, how we did business. I mean, to say right. the least. Um, but how have you been able to um, manage your day to day and think of how you do business or communicate differently or think about the business differently um how has this affected you or kept your spirits up yeah how you doing <laughs> yeah yeah well you know I, I going into this and it's funny because you know you saw this happening in china and you're like yeah no it's never going to happen here no we we do too many good things and we have a medical system and i use hand sanitizer right that's my thing Mm -hmm. And then there was February, we were together in Munich and the denim community was there. And that's when it was just starting to build up a bit in Italy. Um, and then it continued to get worse and get closer and closer and closer to home. And it's interesting because both myself and my husband, we were getting ready at work, you know, like contingency plans and crisis uh, management teams getting together. And um, it's interesting because we didn't really prepare our family. And so my kids were like, what's going on? Now I have a 20 year old and a 16 year old. So it's not like they're, they don't understand things or they're not seeing information. Of course they learn everything on Instagram. Right. But um, you know, I realized all of a sudden they were getting so anxious and we had done so much to prepare on a business level, but how do you prepare on a personal level for this? And so when we sat down as a family and said, okay, this is how we're going to get through it. And we're all going to be at home for, for a bit of time. How do you manage that? And I have to say now that we're going in our third week, you know, oh, we're all doing okay. I think we like each other more. We're actually eating dinner together. These are nice things. Yeah. Um, you know, we all have assigned our spots, gone to our corners during the day. And, you know, when your goal is just to get through the day and stay healthy, it's a little bit different than who's running here and who needs this and that. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, your basics become uh, your focus, your health, you know, sleeping right, getting some fresh air every day, exercising. Mm -hmm. My daughter and I do yoga three times a week together on Zoom mm -hmm. um, just to try to, you know, keep that sanity for sure. Yeah, and connection. So that's your twenty-year-old. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. It, so in that sense, it's it's been good. Um, both of them have, you know, spring break did not exist for anybody mm -hmm. uh, this year, and um, you know everything through digital. And I find I'm talking to my parents more, which is interesting to hear their perspective. My mom is my media source during the day. She will text me if there's, you know, any if. If Governor Cuomo is coming on TV, he's coming on in 20 minutes, you know, so it's, it's cute. Um, and then, you know, of course, how do we connect with everyone else digitally? Conferences, video conferences all the time. It's, it's very different, very different to work like this. And um, even the, the team in New York, um, you know, we're getting every day, we kick off, we have a morning meeting. The denim team already, we were always virtual in connecting with Michael and Halle. So it's, it's not really any different for us. Mm -hmm. 
So have you kept, you've kept on a schedule, a business schedule, yeah, the, integrating family? Very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody has to stay on a schedule. The hard thing is stepping away at the end of the day because, you know, I'm literally going from one room to another and that's it. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, I'm having to cook more, which is not very good because the fire alarm goes off almost every time I cook. <laughs> so it's I you like, that one. Uh, tell my kids, I'm like, it's blackened, you know, there's, yeah. nothing black. there, there's nothing wrong with having waffles for dinner, really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, but, but, you know, we, you, you figure it out. And then now we're looking at another four weeks of this. I'm hearing of other companies that are out until the middle of May. I don't know. What are, what are you hearing on the West Coast? Um, at least until May. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I found myself communicating more. Um, it's, yeah. it's, it's, you know, it's better to be in person, but communicating yeah. more with family and friends, um, finding, you know, fun things to do. It, um, but yeah, it's, um, of course I can't show product. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there it is. It's a great hand to wait. <laughs> but yeah. how are you doing? You know, um, yeah. because we develop, you know, as vendors, we develop relationships with our clients. So checking in. Right. Um, exactly the same, you know, and especially, you know, through, um, I've been checking in a lot with Panos. Hey, how's it going on your side of the world? And I have to say the outpouring from Asia and Europe, especially because New York City has been on the news the past couple of days um, and the, you know, the, the shock of everything happening so quickly here. I've had such lovely notes from people in the industry that throughout the years we've crossed paths just to check that I'm okay. So the sincerity and the kindness is definitely there, which kind of goes back to your generosity. Ah, of how oh, as a community we we need yes so it was it was panos came up with it um and it was you know it was prophetic it was very timely um so it's it's let me start asking you the questions here so i have them i have them in oh sure i so. did so we're warming up into the questions <laughs> yes yes yeah and of course it's a panos it's a Panos word, you know, I would expect nothing less from him to come up with combining two words. When he combines three words, you got to watch out, so. <laughs> oh, I love that guy. Love him. He's so creative yeah. and so passionate. So many people are saying that nothing will be the same after the aftermath of the pandemic. Do you agree with that? Yeah what repercussions in the fashion industry and denim in particular uh, do you think there will be? Yeah, post-pandemic world, what does it look like? That's, you know, where's everyone's crystal ball? Um, I mean, I, there's definitely going to be changes. You can't take everyone out of their daily life and, you know, and, and not expect any changes. We're, we're creating new habits over this time. And it's not like it's just one week you know, we're looking at several months of this. Mm -hmm. um, so will everything change? I don't think it'll be everything, but I do think there will be a lot of changes because now we've had this sense, I mean, it's sort of like going on a retreat, right? It's this, we had a, um, a group, which actually Panos had helped us out with, um, Planet Rehab. And this is really, we're going through a Planet Rehab right here, right now. Mm -hmm. And so a lot will change. I think when we look at uh, the consumer and their attitudes will change, you know, buying habits. Now we're going two months perhaps without really having any retail stores open. Yeah. And so of course your buying habits will change. Will the consumer engage as much in physical retail or will there be more online? You know, will people be afraid of going into dressing rooms? Um, will public spaces and meeting in malls still be the same? You know, especially in middle America, that's the mall is the place, you know, of a community gathering of sorts. Mm -hmm. So there will be a lot of changes from a business sense. We know that business, not all businesses will survive this. 
um, there were a lot that were shaky beforehand. So how do you go through this devastating time with stores closed, consumers not buying, you know, the attention is, is totally on a different level of health and wellness. And I think, you know, this is where it will also shift in fashion because apparel will not be seen as something fashion oriented of the seasonal, but it will be more protective wear. You know, you, you, you'll be coming more into how do you protect yourself from this happening again and keeping um, healthy. So definitely there'll be a change in that. And I think we'll see a return of this back to basics, a seasonless styling, that sort of um, effect we'll have. That's really interesting. Uh, you know, the fabric mills uh, have tried to introduce and incorporate wellness. You know, we have, uh, you know, fabric that makes your skin softer. Um, we have, you know, warming, we have cooling, um, we have antimicrobial. So will there be something anti-germ, you know? Yeah. Um, well, look, I mean, we'll, we'll be wearing masks now. There'll be a whole new category of masks. I don't, I've never owned a mask prior to this. I never worn one either. Mm -hmm. um, in certain cultures, that was, you know, more norm. But in the United States, and now they're talking if the CDC makes it a requirement to go out, that's 330 million masks that weren't previously being purchased for just consumers to wear to go out. So I think you know this, this could be a time of much creativity, sort of that renaissance, because now we've shut off everything. And what will it look like when we do return in this whole rebirth of what will happen to the industry. And I, I hope the industry takes it as a time to really change some of the ways that were not so good, especially in the United States, the constant promotions. Mm -hmm. I mean, could we please just all stop the sales and just agree to have sales at, you know, two weeks a year or whatever specified time it is. Mm -hmm. So we don't continue in this downward spiral where, you know, it's, it's cheaper to buy a, a coffee than it is, uh, where, you know, buying a t-shirt is um, less expensive than buying coffee. You know, why, why should that be? Yes. And we've been talking about working on sustainability for years now and really pushing it um, to the to our customers and to the consumers in increasingly, you know, uh, a better ways, more creative ways uh, to reach the end consumer. But for sustainability, what is this going to do with that effort that we have been doing? Um, right now, everything is stopped. Our mill has uh, stopped for two weeks at least. Um, all the other mills and we are unable to ship um, factories are closed. We're not traveling. The earth is allowed to breathe right now. So, yeah. Um, so in that sense, there is, we are still, you know, we still have the momentum, the sustainability momentum, but maybe it's an opportunity to talk about, you know, sustainable um, activity on the, you know, from the consumer's part. And to your point, you know, all of this product, every delivery, it's so much. So let's narrow it down back to basics and, um, and yeah, not so consume, 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 consume yeah. smart. Right. And understanding value. And I think this period of retreating allows consumers to read define sustainability to what it means to them. Because now our basic life is, you know, making sure we have food, shelter, water, um, clothing will be next after that. Uh, but, you know, we don't, maybe we don't need to have a new pair of jeans every other week coming into, you know, our, our stores or online. Mm -hmm. um, so I do think sustainability will remain key. Many businesses were already building this into their core strategies. That's the case for lensing. 
I'm hoping that this can help to accelerate and raise even more attention on a consumer level um, so that that buying power is there. Um, my concern though is that we'll see with, there's too many garments and if they're sold too cheaply right now, it will be harder for us to get out of that, um, you know, cheap, low price mentality. But I think now, you know, just going for a walk outside becomes the highlight of your day yeah. when you're stuck in, you know. And so being together with nature uh, takes on a different level of understanding. And I think now more than ever, this interconnectedness in the world we see and the social side, because when we talk about sustainability, it's not only environmental, but the social side. And I, I think now we have a different understanding without a doubt on the social side of what's happening. Um, and even I think the way the industry has come together to say, you know, hey, let's make sure people are paying for the orders that, that we've made for them and highlighting this because our factory workers need to get paid. Um, and if you want to have clothes, you know, we need to make sure that we're taking care of people in other countries too. So sustainability, socially and environmental, I, I think will be even more important after this. Yes. And those are the companies that will continue to thrive post pandemic. Yes, yes, there'll be a new appreciation. Um, for what's the priority. In, in yeah. So in addition to heartbreaking and shocking news around the world, we've witnessed a lot of heartwarming scenes of solidarity and kindness, empathy everywhere from people singing together um, from the balconies in Italy. That was so beautiful and playing um, musical instruments. Um, do you think we'll witness a shift in values that was the next question but i think we had talked about that but uh we kind of answered that question already but so so probably there will be most yes there will be a shift in values um there has to be a shift in values and i think too if you look at gen z and millennials Mm -hmm. This is a uh, you know very formidable time for them, and now they've experienced this. You know, it's funny because prior to this happening, I would say what stood in the mind of my kids was always like Hurricane Sandy. So we had a week without electricity, and every time a storm would come, you know, my son would say, "Oh my gosh, we got to make sure we charge everything. Are we going to be without electricity again?" And so I think, you know, th this is a time where they're really forming a lot of their opinions. And I think this will shape, you know, especially Gen Z being a little bit younger, this will really shape their uh, ideas in the world and probably even impact their lives on what they choose to do. Um, I mean, I, I feel so sorry for students who are graduating that this year that are seniors in, in universities around the world they don't have graduations. They're going into a market where now there's all of these, um, you know, unemployment and hiring freezes. So um, I think this will definitely shape those generations. And I do love this. I, I was out for a walk this morning and one of my neighbors, their kids had um, made a sign, you know, we, we really applaud the nurses and doctors now. And I thought, you know, it's really sweet for this respect for cashiers and food service and delivery people who previously, you know, didn't really get that much attention in the world. Um, so I, I think, again, there's a kindness, a generosity that, that we are displaying during this time. Yes, it's, it's beautiful. A new perspective when your freedoms, some of your, a lot of your freedoms are taken away. Some argue that the world needed a wake up call so that people can take climate change, sustainability, environmental issues seriously. Do you think that we can qualify COVID-19 pandemic as the wake up call? Or do you believe once all of this is over, it will be business as usual. We're going to see the mindset uh, change in terms of product development and offer. And I think um, 
we had talked about that, that yes, indeed. Yeah, I just want to add to that. If we do not use this as a time for change, then we are not being responsible businesses. I mean, we, we have to use this. This is our wake up call. Um, and I know and people have been the other, the flip side of sustainability and oh, we'll go back our ways. And, and I keep saying this over and over because that's what I believe and I want others to also make that change. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think it's so important to record uh, these messages now and to capture the moment so that next year, two years, five years, we can go back to this and say, yeah, remember that was my headspace during that time and you know, where, where we are and to see those changes. And being here in New York, a lot of people have related this back to 9-11. And I see that as such, you know, a different tragic moment in our history. And that was also very local to happening here in New York. Yes, it rippled through throughout the nation. But, you know, I think the sense when you were here in New York City and you saw the smoke still, you know, weeks later, there was something different that happened. Um, but I get that same kind, that kindness that people are having towards each other. But you look at the awakening that 9-11 had for many people um, and the changes that happened, especially around security. Remember before 9-11, you would get to the airport 20 minutes in advance and you'd whiz right through or you'd walk in and out of buildings without any photo ID or any check-in. And, you know, think of how that changed our lives. And this will be so much more. So much more. We can't even fathom, you know, how much yeah. change going forward from here. I was in New York for 9-11 and it was so, you know, it was tragic and horrific and it was scary. Um, but there was so much beauty in the connection. I remember getting out at Union Square and we were all looking up and seeing the smoke. And it was like we all were looking at each other in a different way. Like, hey, you know, walking down the street in New York City, nobody looks at each other. But everybody was connecting like, you know, without any, yeah. are you okay? How you doing? You, you know, and it feels like, that now in the sense that you know you look around to your neighbors and the, our elders and um those who are immune compromised hey do you need anything how can i help um right and it yeah to totally different yeah of how people can act and remember the messages in the subways and the the notes that people would leave or the the memorials or I'm looking for someone. I mean, it's just because you, everyone knew someone that was a part of that or connected that was, someone was hurt, you know, by it. Um, that, yeah, I mean, the, these are those, these are those, those times that do change your lives. Where do you live in, uh, are you in the city? Or? No, I'm in Chatham. I'm in New Jersey. Do you know where Chatham is? Yes. But, okay. Yeah. So it's nice. I mean, I'm looking out my backyard now, which actually I have to change the light because it's, um, it's getting a little bit more, but, um, I, you know, so it's not bad for me because I can still walk outside. I can do other things. The grocery store, the density of the population isn't here like you have in New York city. So. Yeah. Good. And you have all your supplies and you can get to the grocery store and. Exactly. Are your parents okay? Yeah. yeah. Where are your parents? So my parents are in upstate New York and Binghamton. Okay, nice. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So they're, they're, yeah, and they're fine. They're staying in. They have a neighbor helping them. And, um, you know, like I said, they watch a little too much news. Okay, yeah. It, with, you know, like we're connecting now. We've spoken on the, on the phone before, but in times of crisis, you know, communication is key. Flights, yeah. shows, kingpins is changing. Um, really impressed and excited to see how that, um, you know, manifests and developed. Uh, you know, customer visits are canceled. We've uh, witnessed a surge in digital communications. And do you think that's going to be something that, uh, I know you said that that was a part of your daily um, life, business life, but do you think that's going to 
change more so after this? I do. And I think this was another, when we talk about some things that were broken that need to be fixed, um, this is definitely another area. I mean, yeah, my, my schedule was always, okay, when's the trade show? Backing into that, that's when we have to do photo shoots. You know, all of that was, was built in. I almost never didn't have a time where there wasn't a trip planned to go somewhere. And now I have no trips, no, <laughs> no reservations. I think this will change because people will say, you know, I was able to put this together. I don't need to go to another show, how much time that takes, but also budgets are going to be cut. Mm -hmm. So there's not going to be all that extra money and we will be challenged in the industry to do more with less. And I think that's when creativity can really kick in. Um, so I, I, I do think also the, the shows, well, I love getting together to see everyone. I do think that there needed to be some changes with the shows and too many shows. Mm -hmm. I, while I spend the bulk of my time in the denim industry, I'm also in other areas too. And you look at across all the shows mm -hmm. and now, you know, some of them are going to be canceled completely. I think this is a very good experiment to have kingpins be online mm -hmm. and see how it works to connect with people. Mm -hmm. um, and also when you think about it, we were always on this race to come up with new ideas and more ideas and more ideas. And every time you walk into a kingpins in that room was, you know, so many ideas and many of them never came to commercial reality. So did we, were we coming up with too many ideas? And maybe if we only had, you know, three great ideas a year, and you know they get two of them get picked up but how much in resources um were really put into all of that that wasn't really necessary to begin with yes we're this is exciting opportunity in my mind that this opportunity is going to shake us and charge us to be more creative yes um, creative in exploring how um we communicate our vision or message and yeah i mean it's it was overwhelming i used to be on the other side I used to be um you know not a vendor and a, um right working for a brand and it was it's overwhelming to go to a show and try to you know uh pay attention to all of the messages that the mills have worked so hard and spent a lot of money to convey yeah so um so you have a, a really good point. So we'll see what happens. So the last question, we might have covered this already, but as you know, well, you've mentioned generosity. Um, yeah. Before the crisis hit, we realized it was more relevant and meaningful than ever. Um, what does generosity mean to you? And how do you see the fashion industry and, and denim's role in the future in um, playing to that generosity? Yeah. yeah, it's funny that we we talked about it a couple times because it does, it fits so well now. Yeah. Um, and generosity, you know, playing off of generosity and the kindness and openness, which I think is another attribute that we need to focus on more as we change post pandemic. Yeah. Um, more transparency within our industry about how things are being done, the social side as well as the environmental side and the impact that that takes on. So I think, you know, overall the mood of citizens around the world, of consumers, around having, you know, greater kindness towards each other um, and relaying that through in this theme is perfect for this time. Thank you so much, Trisha. You're welcome. Thank really you. Appreciate your time and uh, your brain and your heart um, and speaking with us. And um, yeah, we'll talk soon. I, um, yeah, I love. I can't wait to see what you guys put together. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you <know. laughs> Thank you. Yeah. 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 Inject um, that for sure. <laughs> All right. Take care. Bye. Bye. Okay. Bye.